the Broadway Playhouse. Good evening and welcome to the Broadway Playhouse. Tonight starring Anne Blythe, Robert Cummings, and William Bendix in I'll Be Yours. And now here is our producer, Mr. William Keeley. If songs and romance and comedy are welcome in your home tonight, our play is made to order for your enjoyment. There isn't a, a social problem, a murder, or a psychiatrist in it anywhere. Just plain entertainment. The play is Universal International Studios' delightful film, I'll Be Yours. And there's a three-star cast. Anne Blythe, Robert Cummings, and William Bendix. All of them talented players who rank high on your list of favorites. Our stars are on stage and the curtain rises on the first act of I'll Be Yours, starring Robert Cummings as George, Anne Blythe as Louise, and William Bendix as Joe. In New York City, just off Times Square, there's a small, a somewhat shabby restaurant presided over by a sober, unsmiling waiter named Joe Wynarski. Well, young lady, what'll it be? I'll have the Hungarian goulash for 45 cents and a glass of milk for five cents, please. I'm sorry, the Hungarian goulash is all out. Every time we have goulash, it goes like hotcakes. Oh, well, I'll have the hotcakes then. That goes even faster than the Hungarian goulash. How about a nice turkey sandwich with Russian dressing? But the turkey sandwich is 55 cents. Yeah. You know what it costs to raise a turkey today? No, but Take I... Take it from I... me, it costs a lot of money. First, after you get the turkey, you've got to feed him. What do you feed him? Oh, well, I don't Food know. Food you feed him. And after you feed the turkey, he's got to be shipped. That means all kinds of railroad charges. Yes, I know, but I'm... And after he's shipped, he's got to be knocked off, and then he's got to be dressed. You know what you've got to pay a turkey plucker today? But that's just the cheapest part. Who wants to eat a turkey until he's cooked? You know what a cook gets, even in a dump like this? And what about the Russian dressing? I suppose you think Stalin gives it away. <laughs> No, and yet you've got the nerve to complain because a turkey sandwich with Russian dressing costs 55 cents. Well, I'm awfully sorry, but I happen to live on a budget. Oh, a budget, huh? And I can only afford 60 cents for lunch, including tip. Well, in that case, I would suggest the chopped chicken liver sandwich for 35 cents. It's got just as many vitamins as the turkey, maybe even more. <sighs> Thank you. I'll have the chopped chicken liver sandwich. So why do you have to argue? One chopped chicken liver sandwich! One chop chicken liver coming up. People come in here, they complain about the prices, they complain about the... Oh, Mr. Prescott, good afternoon. Oh, hello, Joe. I suppose you're busy, huh? Who's busy? <laughs> it's 2.30. <laughs> A fine time to be eating lunch, young lady. If I were eating lunch, I'm waiting for the sandwich. Oh. Hey, you see what I mean? They also complain about the service. <laughs> you, uh, you got my income tax, Mr. Prescott? You're here all ready for your signature. Huh. Uh, what do I owe the government? At $12.52. You pay it quarterly starting March 15th. $12.52. Ain't that a little steep? Well, that's only the first quarter. Your total tax is $50.08. Holy smoke. You took off that 10 bucks I gave the Salvation Army? I did. And the withholding tax. Believe me, I took off everything that I could. Uh, look, uh, uh, suppose we say that I gave $15 to the Salvation Army. Huh? Now, look, if you want to file a dishonest return, you can get yourself another lawyer. All right, all right, all right. Don't get excited. I'll pay. I don't mean to interrupt, but if my sandwich is ready in my glass yes, of milk... Yes, I'll get it. I'll get it. What about the eight bucks I lost at the races, Mr. Prescott? Not deductible. Now, how do you like that? If I lose, it ain't deductible, but if I win... You pay. Uh. <laughs> Here's your sandwich, young lady. Eat it and help. Oh, thank you. Only this is not chopped chicken liver. Can I help it if we're out of chopped chicken liver? This is the turkey sandwich with the Russian dressing, like I told you. But it costs 55 cents. Stop worrying about the cost. I'm carrying this 55 cent sandwich on the books like it was chopped chicken liver, which we're out of. I do not want charity. Look, the boss ain't losing a cent on this. Confidentially, the turkey sandwiches are made with chicken. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, that's different. Yeah. Thank you. Well, legally, this amounts to collusion. Nobody asked you, Mr. Prescott. Oh, I beg your pardon, young lady. This is Mr. Prescott. He's a lawyer. I, I do not believe I have the pleasure of knowing your name. Louise Gingobusher. Yeah, this is Louise. 
Louise what? Gingle busher. Miss, are you sure? <laughs> well, sure I'm sure. Oh. Uh, Mr. George Prescott, I want you to meet Miss Louise... Uh, uh, what was her name? Uh, Gingle busher. Uh, How do you do? <laughs> Gingle busher. <laughs> Sooner or later, you're going to have to change that name legally. And in that case, you'd certainly wish to consult with Mr. Prescott, wouldn't you? Well, yes, I, I suppose perhaps I would. Well, I'd be delighted. Well, I think that. Well, give her your card. How's she going to know where to look you up? Oh, uh, my, uh, my card, Miss Gingle-Busher. Oh, thank you. That's why I'm very glad to have met you. Well, goodbye, Joe. I... Don't forget about March 15th. No, I won't. Huh. Ah, there goes a real high-class lawyer. Yes, he seems very nice. But why does he wear that beard? Be oh. <laughs> well, he, he claims that a beard makes him look more distinguished. Oh, it certainly <laughs> makes him look more something. <laughs> he should stop by a barber shop. Barber shops cost money. Oh, does he have to stay on a budget, too? Oh, him? He don't make enough to afford a budget. <laughs> and do you know why? Why? Because he's so honest that nobody hires him. Uh, but how does he eat? Well, he's my lawyer. That's how he eats. Oh. <laughs> Besides, someday I'll have my own restaurant, see? Naturally, I'll have a lot of lawsuits, so then he'll eat every day. Oh, my goodness, just look at the time. Yes, I am looking. I go off at 3 o'clock. Oh, and at 3 o'clock, I go on. Well, don't tell me you're a waitress like me. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm a nusher at a movie theater. Oh. I just got the job a few days ago, and if I start off by oh, being so late... Oh, so that's why you ain't going to finish your sandwich. Oh, I can't. I'll be late. Uh, here's your money. No, 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 wait a minute. You've got to pay for it, and you've got to eat what you pay for. If people stop eating, what happens? Oh, please, I just yeah, Everybody to... will be dead. Besides, I'll be out of a job. Here, here, here's a bag. Now, now take the sandwich with you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Say, tell me something. Yeah? If the turkey sandwiches here are made out of chicken, mm -hmm. what are the chicken sandwiches made out of? Please. That I gave my word of honor not to tell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks just the same. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Yes, sir, Louise, you're doing fine. Is Head Usher, I have great confidence in your future. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. McGill. Good night. Oh, break down, will you? We're off duty. You know, baby, you're just my type. Uh, uh, please, Mr. McGill, I'd like to go home now. Sure, baby, sure. But first we'll go somewhere, huh? Have a couple of drinks and then oh, maybe... Oh, I don't think uh, my husband would like that. Husband? He's very fussy about such things. Don't give me that. Where's your wedding ring? Oh, uh, my husband had to pawn it again. Let's his wife work while he pawns her wedding ring? Well, he only did it to buy milk for the babies. Babies? Triplets. Oh, oh, there he is now. Here I am, honey. Huh? Oh, oh, hello. Oh, darling. How are the babies? Oh, they're fine. Uh, <laughs> babies? What is this, the badger oh, game? please, please, if you'll just walk down to the corner with me, then he won't bother me anymore. Who won't bother you? Shh, him. Oh. Uh, good night, Mr. McGill. Yeah, good night. Hey. Well, I, I guess I'm safe now. <laughs> Thanks very much. But how did you happen to be passing by? Well, can I go to the movies? Is there any law against oh, that? Oh, no. I'm very glad you did, Mr. Uh, uh, Winarski, Joe, Joe Winarski. Oh, that's even worse than Gingo Busher. <laughs> Look, would you mind telling me what this is all about? Well, he wanted me to go out with him, so... Well, I told him you were my husband. Oh. <laughs> we, we got babies, too, huh? Eh? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Triplets. Huh? Portia, Guinevere, and Lancelot. Why must they all be girls? Oh, Lancelot's a boy. Now, look, young lady, let's understand each other. If I ever have a boy, he's going to be called Joe. Oh, but Lancelot's so much more distinguished. Either that kid's name is Joe, or I'm going back to that loafer and tell him we're getting a divorce. All right, all right. <laughs> it's Joe. Good. In that case, may I have the pleasure of walking home with you? That, uh, that is, if it's not too far. Oh, thank you. I have a room in Mrs. Stugo's boarding house on 47th Street. Well, here it is, Joe. Would you care to sit on the steps for a while? Hey, what have I got to lose? <laughs> Gee, you know, when I first got off the train, I, I thought I'd never feel safe in New York. But 
There really isn't much difference, is there? I mean, in people. They want to be kind here, too, and help each other. Like, well, like you. Oh, me? <laughs> I ain't kind. Practical, yes, but kind, no. And like Mr. Prescott, helping you with your income tax and you helping him from starving to death. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what he'd look like without a beard. Oh, believe me, no different. Hmm. Guy's got no ambition or you wouldn't be so honest. <laughs> have, uh, ha have you an ambition? Oh, not especially. I once thought I could sing. That's why I came to New York. <laughs> you want to know something? But I'm a much bigger success as an usher than I am as a singer. Oh. Do you have an ambition? Well, naturally. I'm not just a man who sells blue plates and sits in the balcony at the movies. <laughs> I want to have my own restaurant. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, you've never really seen me at my best until you've seen me all dressed up in my evening clothes. Serving breast of guinea hen under glass to a lady in one of them new low-cut gowns. <laughs> oh, believe me, that's life. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, tomorrow night, I'm serving it at a big social function at the Savoy Ritz Hotel. Uh -huh. You should see me there. At the joint where I work, a knife is a knife and a fork is a fork. But, but when you're serving a big banquet at the Savoy Ritz, they have fish knives and salad forks and eight different kinds of spoons. You wouldn't believe it. Did you ever have breast of guinea hen under glass? Oh, no, never. No? Oh, well, I'll tell you, watch. You'll be at the Savoy Ritz at 9 o'clock tomorrow night, and I'll sneak in. Oh, you, you really think you could? Well, it's a cinch. You, you just hang around the entrance of the ban banquet room, and you watch for me. H have you got an evening oh, dress? Oh, I, I think I can borrow one. That's the spirit. In this town, it don't make no difference who owns a dress. It's what's in it. <laughs> well, <laughs> good night, Miss Gingelbush, and don't forget. Tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Good night, Joe. Oh, it worked, Joe, it worked. I gave the head waiter the invitation you gave me and he let me right in. Shh, not so loud. You know, he called me well, madam. Well, he'll call you something else if he sees you talking to me. Don't forget, I'm just a waiter here. Oh, how do you like my dress? Huh? It's, it's from one of the stage shows at uh, the theater. Oh, it's very high class, very. Now look, you go and mingle with the guests. Just don't tell them that your name is Gingelbusher. A name like that ain't gonna help the good neighbor policy. Don't notice me too much. In society, you don't get very chummy with the waiters. Oh, but how do I tell the waiters from the guests? Oh, that's easy. With the waiters, the evening clothes fit. Now, go on, mingle. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Well, well, good evening. Uh, oh, <laughs> good evening. Uh, are you enjoying yourself? Oh, yes. Oh, I I'm sorry, but you can't sit down here. Oh, 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 yes, I can. Oh, please. The waiters aren't allowed to sit with the guests. Waiter? Do I look like a waiter? Well, I can tell by the way your clothes fit. Perfectly. Now, look here, young lady. I'm Jay Conrad Nelson. I'm the man who's giving this party. I'm paying for the whole thing. I waiter? Oh, waiter, come here. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hors d'oeuvre, sir. Just tell her who I am. You don't know who you are? Of course I know, but she doesn't. Oh. You are Mr. J. Conrad Nelson, president of the Pan American Meatpacking Corporation. Yes, and tell her who's giving the party. Well, you are. Yeah. And believe me, you'll know it when you get the bill. <laughs> Thank you, now. Run along. Yes. Well, now, how about telling me who you are? Well, I... Uh, she's one of the entertainers, sir. An entertainer? Yes. Wonderful. What do you do? Dance? Sing? Sing? Oh, well, what not... are we waiting for? Come on, come on. Oh, no, no. Well, that's what you're here for, isn't it? Well, no, not exactly. You know, we have a fine orchestra. They'll play anything you want. No. No, I don't want to sing. How much am I paying you for not singing? Oh, then never mind. Now, if you won't go to the orchestra, I'll have the orchestra come to you. Alberto? Alberto? Si, senor. Yeah, now, now, what shall it be? Uh, well, uh, uh, you don't know Midnight in Paris, do you? Midnight in Paris? Oh, but yes, senorita, I know very well. Oh. Yeah, well, then play it, play it. Uh, just a minute now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this charming young lady, whom shall I say? Louise Ging... Oh, just say anybody. Uh, this, this charming young lady is going to sing for us. <laughs> Thank you. 
A throbbing voice within me calls and I must obey. Midnight in Paris, a strange delight steals through the night. I hear the sweetest music and oh, what does it say? Midnight in Paris. Come with me. Oh, oh, oh but, but where? Uh, never mind. Just let's get out of here. Well, here we are. But, but, but what's this? Yeah, my apartment. Don't you like it? <laughs> Finest apartment in the Savoy Ridge. Oh, it's beautiful, but don't you think we ought... Now, uh, how about telling me the truth? In the first place, you crashed this party, didn't you? Oh, that's all right. <laughs> When Jay Conrad Nelson throws a party, well, if I couldn't get in any other way, I'd crash it myself. Uh, I'd better go. I mean, now. Oh, no. Now, in the second place, you've heard that, uh, that I was, uh, well, shall I say, susceptible to good-looking young women? Oh, no, no, I, no, I didn't even right. know... I admit it. Everybody has his weakness. In the third place, you, you happen to have a very nice voice. Oh, uh, thank you. So you thought you might be able to get me to put you in a musical show or something, didn't you? Oh, no, you're wrong. Why, uh, I never... Uh, uh, come now, good woman, don't give me that. <laughs> Hello? Uh, this is Mr. Nelson. I'd like room service, please. Uh, we'll have a little drink, and then we'll go downstairs. Mm -hmm. You ordered room service, sir? Well, this is amazing. I just picked up the phone. Uh, <laughs> Savoy Ritz service, sir. Well, uh, uh, two bottles of Chabert, 37. Yes, sir. And, uh, uh, madame... Hmm? Oh, oh, well, I'll just have the same, thank you. Oh, good, that makes four bottles. <laughs> well, what are you jerking your head at her for? Me? Oh, <laughs> I, I beg your pardon, sir, just a nervous habit. <laughs> you mean I make you nervous? Oh, oh, no, 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 sir, not at all, no, sir. Well, then go down and get the champagne. Yes, sir, yes, sir. If you ask me, that waiter's off his rocker. Well, let's get back to business, shall we? Mm hmm? Now, how would you like to have a nice fat part in a Broadway musical? Uh, but I don't want a nice fat part in anything, I just... I want to go home. I wish you'd stop running, young woman. This isn't a track meet, you know. I'm a very rich man, and I like you, and I've made up my mind to do something There's for you. nothing I want. Well, then why did you crash my party? Well, it wasn't my idea at all. Well, whose idea was it? Well, it... It was my husband's idea. There, now, he's... Your husband? You... You're married? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, no, how awful. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, no, no, it's too late now. Oh, why did you do it? Oh, I don't know. I just fell in love. Uh, that's what I was and... afraid of. Puppy love, hasty marriage. Well, there's only one solution. You'll have to leave him. Oh, no. Oh, no. He couldn't live without me. Oh, well, he'll get used to it. Of course, we'll have to be fair about it. After all, here's a young man been supporting you to the best of his ability. We'll have to make up for all that. Well, I'll take care of him. You have no idea how much easier it is to endure unhappiness with money in the bank. Uh, <laughs> what does the uh, poor fellow Do? Do? Well, he does something, doesn't he? Or is he retired? Oh, no, no. Well, I'm giving you a chance to make a success of this man, to make him rich. He, he, he's a lawyer. Good. Now, what's his name? His name? Oh, now, just a minute. It's right here in my purse. <laughs> you mean you have to look up his name? Oh, no, no, of course not. I just want to give you his card. Oh. Here. Yeah, George W. Prescott, attorney at law. Well, I can always use another lawyer. I'll give him a job, and then he can introduce you to me. And then you'll get your divorce. <laughs> Just leave everything to me. Uh, the champagne, sir. I don't understand it. The service was never this good before. Uh, uh, just one thing. I, I, I think Madame had better be leaving. What's that? I, I mean, I, I just saw the lady's husband downstairs in the lobby. M my husband? He had a very sinister look on his face. Oh, that's terrible. How, how does he know you're here? Oh, he always follows me. Well, he can't find you here. Heaven knows what he might think. Yes, heaven knows. You keep out of this. Yes, sir. Now, <laughs> uh, you better go, my dear. Now, when will I see you again? Hmm? Uh, tomorrow night? Well, my husband's awfully jealous. No, now, I'm... don't you worry. I'll take care of everything. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Prescott. George W. Prescott. Goodbye, Mr. Nelson. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> In 
curtain falls on Act One of I'll Be Yours, starring Anne Blythe, Robert Cummings, and William Bender. Do you remember the old phrase, I'm saving for a rainy day? Well, that doesn't refer only to money. It may also refer to many other things, including knowledge. Every time we undergo a new experience, we're adding to our storehouse of knowledge and know-how. We may not need that information right away, but there will come a time when we'll be able to make good use of it. And we'll be grateful for being prepared. Better than relying on chance experience to increase our knowledge is to take advantage of systematic education. This way, we can learn efficiently and economically. The United States Armed Forces Institute, USAFI, is the agency through which servicemen and women all over the world may study and gain high school credits or even a high school diploma. Some of you may want to add to your college credits. But why not do it the easy way, the USAFI way? And now, here is our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act two of I'll Be Yours, starring Anne Blythe as Louise, Robert Cummings as George, and William Bendix as Joe. Well, it's the following morning, and thoroughly smitten with Louise Gingelbusher, whom he believes is married, Mr. J. Conrad Nelson has hastened to call upon George W. Prescott, a young lawyer with a, a full beard and an empty purse. Good morning. Tell Mr. Prescott I want to see him, J. Conrad Nelson. Well, how do you do? What do you mean, how do you do? Get Mr. Prescott. I'm Mr. Prescott. Is there anything I can do for you, Mr.? Uh... J. Conrad Nelson. Yes, yes, you bet there's something you can do for me. Prescott, you're just the man I've been looking for. I don't know if my name means anything to you, but No, I... it doesn't. Well, I'm the Pan American Meat Packing Corporation, and I'm here to appoint you our legal representative. Well? Yeah. Well, I, I, I hardly know what to say. Good, good. I like a lawyer who thinks things through. Not some dope who blurts out the first thing that comes to his mind. Now, Prescott, I wouldn't be surprised if you ended up on the Supreme Court bench. <laughs> You've even got the whiskers for it, haven't you? <laughs> and I wouldn't be surprised if you wound up in a federal penitentiary. Now, just a little minute there. Do you take me for a complete fool, Mr. Nelson? When a firm doing millions of dollars worth of business a year offers to engage an unknown lawyer, believe me, there's something fishy about it. Sorry, Mr. Nelson, not interested. Well, obviously I've made a mistake. You certainly have. I was looking for a lawyer with a sense of ethics. Supreme Court. Bah! You ought to be out chasing ambulances. And what's wrong with my ethics? You accuse a man being dishonest and decide that he's guilty without giving him a chance to defend himself. Good day, Mr. Preston. Now, wait a moment. You doubted my integrity. Well, I like that. Didn't you accuse me of being crooked? Yes, well, maybe I have been hasty. Yes. All right, I apologize. Uh, tell me your side of the story, and, uh, and then I'll kick you out. Well, that's more like it. Now then, uh, when I was a young man... Look, I don't want to hear the story of your life, only why you wanted to hire me. Yeah, well, in order to answer that, I've got to tell you the story of my life. Now, do you want to hear it or not? Well, I said I'd listen, and I will. Well, then shut up and let me talk. <laughs> now, when I was a young man, I was poor. I didn't get to be head of a great industrial corporation except by fighting. And I'm frank to admit that some of the things I've done haven't been uh, quite stainless. Always on sound legal ground, you understand, but a little chiseling here, a little trickery there, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Well, as a man grows older, uh, not that I'm old, of course, but he wants to make amends. Uh, I hope this personal confession doesn't bore you, Mr. Prescott. No, go on, go on. Yes, well, now I want to change things, but how? I can't dismiss the lawyers who've been using these tactics. After all, they've been working under my direction. If I fire them after years of loyal service, I'd be a hypocrite. You see my dilemma? Yes, and I sympathize with you deeply, deeply. Thank you. Well, I finally decided to hire an honest lawyer, one who was poor because he was so honest. And let him join my legal staff and show them the light. And after months of search, I have decided upon you. So I came here this morning, and and what do you say to me? But Mr. Nelson, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. Yeah. I'd be proud, very proud, to work for a man like you. Good, good, good. Now, here's the contract I've drawn up. You can read it over if you want to, but I give you my word. Well, that, that's good enough for me. Yeah, well, then just sign here and a copy for yes, me, and then well, just find the bargain, a check for $5,000. Well, that's great. $5,000? Yes, your first month's salary in advance. Incidentally, do you have a car, Mr. Prescott? A car? No, I... Well, you better get one. You never know when I'm liable to send you on a long automobile trip. 
Oh, yes, I'll, I'll get one right away, Mr. Nelson. Good, good. Uh, and uh, it's not that it's any of my business, but I hope there's nothing wrong with your private life. My private life? Yeah, the company's quite peculiar about that point. I hate to be indiscreet, but you, you do look rather strained and worried. Yes, well, I admit times have been trying. Yeah, well, it's always the same story. Domestic difficulties, no doubt. Now, make a clean, sharp break, Mr. Prescott, even if it hurts. D domestic difficulties? You don't understand. No, I... you don't have to make up your mind right now. Your hands will be full enough with my board of directors. <laughs> Incidentally, you'll be meeting with them tomorrow night. Yeah, uh, there's just one thing that puzzles me, Mr. Nelson. Uh, just uh, what did I do that brought me to your attention? What did you... Well, now, let me see. There's a case I remember from the, from the newspaper. No, 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 wait, don't tell me. Excuse me, I don't want to disillusion you, but the only case that ever interested the newspapers was Bronson. The, the versus... Bronson case, of course. Brilliant, a great victory. Yeah, but I lost that case. You lost... <laughs> oh, yes, but the way you lost it, Mr. Prescott, magnificent. Well, good day. <laughs> Well, hello. Shh, not so loud. Yeah, that's some office your husband has. Living quarters in the rear, huh? Well, oh, yes. Yeah, well, what are you doing here? Well, I was just going home, naturally. Oh, must you? Now? Let's go somewhere. Shh, I can't. He expects me. Oh, you're afraid of him, aren't you? Poor child. You didn't tell him. About us? No, of course not. He didn't mention your name, and I didn't either. Oh, thank you. Oh, it must be terrible to be married to such a stupid brute like that. But you don't do worry anymore. Oh, no, I won't. And then I'll see you tomorrow night? I, I just don't know, please. I, I really must go in there. You promised me a date. Shh. And I'm not going to shh unless I get my date. All right, then. Tomorrow night. Good. Nine o'clock at my apartment. Does it have to be at your... It certainly does. I'll be there. Now, please go, Mr. Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> Good day, little lady. <laughs> oh. Oh, good morning. Won't you come in? I was just about to go out, but won't you come in? Oh, thank you. Oh, you'll, you'll have to excuse me if I appear a little overwrought. Something very unusual just happened. Very unusual. I'm, well, I, I never even dreamed that I'd well, be... Well, if you're so busy, I can come back. Oh, you know where I was going. To buy a pencil sharpener. Yes, all of my life I wanted a pencil sharpener of my very own. <laughs> and at last, now I can afford one. Of course, I'll have a secretary now, but there's one thing I'll always do for myself. Sharpen my own pencils. <laughs> Uh, are you well, Mr. President? Oh, I'm delirious. <laughs> Do you realize what just happened to me? Yes. I mean, no. No, I, I... Well, you're talking to the legal representative of J. Conrad Nelson. You see, it does pay to have ideals. It does pay to be honest. And do you know how much it pays? How much? I'm ashamed to tell you. <laughs> but at least I didn't get it by lying or chiseling or being related to the boss. <laughs> You've got it all figured out, haven't you? What? Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't paid any attention to you, have I? I'm excited. Uh, I hope you'll understand. Now, now, what did you come to see me about, Miss... Uh... Dingle Busher. Oh, yes, of course, that's it. Well, uh, what did you decide on? Decide on? I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take the telephone book, open it at random, and see what we find. What on earth are you doing? Well, I'm looking for a new name for you. But I already have a name. Yes, I know. Gingle something. Wasn't that what you came to see me about? A legal change of name is a very simple thing, and it isn't expensive. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, from now on, I'm going to be your legal advisor for nothing. Well, that's very generous of you, but Oh, it's right nothing, now... nothing at all, really. I, I feel like doing it, Miss Gingle. Busher. A uh, busher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this is the happiest day of my life. An hour ago, I had nothing, and now I have money and position, and I'm going to have a car. Uh, how does one buy a car? <laughs> have you ever... Oh, uh, no, oh. no. But I guess you'd just go shopping and pick one out, like, like a pencil sharpener. <laughs> Miss Ginglebusher, do me a favor. Come with me. <laughs> oh, you know that there's something wonderful about your coming in just now. Don't you feel it? Don't you believe in fate? Come on, Miss Ginglebusher. We're going shopping. <laughs> Did you hear that? My horn's louder than his. <laughs> oh, you know, you're not a lawyer. 
You're a small boy with a new toy. Oh, that's just what I want to be. You see, I never really was a small boy. Uh, were you born with that beard, Mr. Prescott? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, Mr. Prescott. Yeah, but we're friends. You, you've got to call me George. Well, I'd try, but I can't. It's the beard. Yeah, what's the matter with it? Oh, it's just lovely, but uh, you can't call a beard by its first name. You can't? You want me to shave it off? Oh, not on my account. I just think it would make you look younger. But I grew it to make me look older. Well, it certainly accomplished its purpose. Thank you. It makes you look 60. 60? At least 60. I'll do it. I'll shave it off. But only on one condition. Condition? Yes, that you wait for me. When do you have to be back to the theater? Oh, I don't. It's my day off. Oh, but that's wonderful. I... Say, um, you, you're sure that just a nice little trim wouldn't do? My beard, I mean. Off. Yeah, not, Entirely. Not, not, not even a nice little goatee? All or nothing. <laughs> well, you win, Miss Ginglebusher. <laughs> No. No, I just can't do it, mister. I'm a barber, but I just can't do it. Cut it off. But it's such a beautiful beard. Why don't you just let me shampoo it and let it go at that? Look, I came into your... (laughs) Shampoo? Uh Uh-huh. And and maybe a little uh, snip here and a a little... Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. No, I'm sorry. It's got to go. I won't do it. Believe me, if I had a beard like that, no woman would ever make me lose it. No, sir. It's not a woman's idea. It's my own. Well, I'll bet your daughter had something to do with it. My daughter? (laughs) That does it. The beard comes off. (laughs) Yes, sir. Oh, I can't believe it, but it is you, isn't it? Yeah, it's me. (laughs) Well, how how do I look? Why, you're handsome now. Yeah, I'm cold, too. (laughs) And I'm not too sure that it is me. (laughs) Oh, of course it's you. You've just been hiding behind that beard for such a long time. Yeah, maybe you're right. (laughs) You know, Louise, I'd say that we make a very striking couple, wouldn't you? Mm, Average. Average nothing. We're way above average. (laughs) Me and my new face and you and your orchid. Orchid? Oh, I forgot to give it to you. Here. (laughs) It's for you, for making me do it. Oh, no, I... Well, well, what's the matter? I just never had an orchid before. Well, that's nothing. I never bought one before. (laughs) Louise, let's let's leave the car in the parking lot. If you'd like. Central Park isn't very far. Let's, Let's go to the park. I think that's a fine idea, George. Thank you. <laughs> oh, gee, it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> What's funny? Oh, I don't know. All my life, I've dreamed about owning a car. Finally, I've got one, and suddenly, I discover how much fun walking can be. <laughs> oh, didn't you ever walk before? Oh, sure, sure, but not under these circumstances. I'll bet even riding in a subway would be fun with you. Oh, not during rush hours. Oh, especially during rush hours. Huh? Yeah, I, I mean... Well, I, I really didn't mean anything. Say, would you like to take a boat ride? Oh, no, I'm not a bit tired. Oh, I'm not tired either. I... Yes? <laughs> Look at them out there on the lake. Practically everybody is kissing somebody. Silly, isn't it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Especially this time of day, I guess. Yeah. Louise, are you sure you wouldn't like to go canoeing? Well... As long as we're here, George, well, why don't we? You know something? We're back in Central Park again. Oh, oh, but it's different at night, isn't it? Even nicer. Yeah. We could go canoeing again if you'd like. Oh, it's getting late, George. Um, Let's just sit down for a while. Where's the music coming from? I don't know. The casino, I guess. Pretty, huh? Oh, it's beautiful.
I didn't know you could sing. Well, I, I don't make a habit of it. But you should, you should. Why, with a voice like that, you could get George, into grand... George, I have to talk to you. I only hope you'll talk to me for the rest of my life. Well, you don't know what you're saying. Well, I, I'm trying to say that... that I'm fond of you. Uh, extremely fond. Uh, but you've just met me. You don't know anything about me. And frankly, George, I'm not perfect. Well, that makes two of us. Uh, maybe I'd better not talk to you now, after all. Or tomorrow, then? Well, I'll be on duty at the theater all day tomorrow, and tomorrow night oh, I... Oh, Mr. Nelson's board of directors meeting tomorrow night. My, my first meeting, you know, I couldn't very well call that off. But, but I can meet you afterwards. Where will you be? Afterwards? Yes, yeah, say nine o'clock. Well, George, I... I have a date tomorrow night. Oh, it's nothing, really. He doesn't mean anything to me, but... I can't break the date. It's nothing, but you can't break it. No, I really can't. I'll explain everything later. No, you don't have to explain anything. After all, we've just, just met. We hardly know each other, do we? Please don't talk like that. I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, I wish it were different. Well, as a matter of fact, so do I. Well, we had a wonderful day, and... Since it's over, I better take you home. Yes. Yes, I think you'd better... All right, then let's go. Come in. Good evening. Joe. Well, hello. Don't give me that female hello. What did you do with my lawyer? Oh, you'll have to forgive me, Joe. I'm just going out. At almost nine o'clock at night? Oh, all right. What's the matter with your lawyer? What's the matter with him? He comes into the restaurant today for lunch. He orders 85 cents worth of food. I know he shouldn't spend more than 30 cents. And after lunch, he gives me a check for $65.15, covering everything he owes my boss. And what do you think? What? The check is good. <laughs> Didn't he tell you anything? No, he won't talk. He just sits there looking unhappy. Not only that, what happened to his beard? Young lady, what did George W. Prescott ever do to you? Nothing. Nothing. I just wanted to do something for him, honestly. Get you an invitation to a swell party. You get yourself picked up by an A number one no good millionaire who has a reputation for being a loafer in North America, South America, and for all I know, Central America. <laughs> and to top it all, you're making a crook out of the nicest guy I know. I'm not making a crook out of him. If anybody's a crook in this, it's... it's me. You're going to explain that, Miss Ginglebusher. If I've got... Get to... away from that door. I'm in a hurry. I have a date. Oh, you have a date, huh? Yes, and I'm going to keep it. Just on account of him. Who with? If I may be so bold. With an A number one, no good millionaire. Good night. And so the curtain falls on act two of I'll Be Yours, starring Ann Blythe, Robert Cummings, and William Bendis. You'll be amazed how many different courses are offered by USAFI. See your information and education officer tomorrow and sign up with USAFI and begin to learn the easy USAFI way. And now once again, here is our director, Mr. William Keeley. The curtain rises on the third act of I'll Be Yours, starring Robert Cummings as George, Anne Blythe as Louise, and William Bendix as Joe. Well, it's nine o'clock, and in his apartment in the Savoy Ritz Hotel, Mr. J. Conrad Nelson, who should know better, has a guest, Louise Ginglebusher. Well, this time, little lady, we're not going to be disturbed by some idiotic waiter. <laughs> I've got the champagne already. Oh, but, uh, but I, I don't want any champagne, Mr. Nelson. I'm not used to it. Oh, but you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> now sit down and try it. Well, uh, later, maybe. You know, you're so strange tonight. You keep bouncing all around the room. <laughs> I think I'd better tell you something, Mr. Nelson. Oh, my dear little girl, you're not afraid of me, are you? <laughs> I'm not a wolf, you know. <laughs> anyway, you're not Red Riding Hood. Now, how did everything go with your husband? Well, that's just what I want to speak to you yeah, about. Why did you ever marry a man old enough to be your daddy? But he isn't anywhere near as old as you are. Why, that's ridiculous. Why, with that beaver he wears? Did you ever see him without his beard? No, no, and I don't intend to see too much of him either. But you made him your legal representative. I let him attend the board of directors meeting, too, and that doesn't mean I have to look at him. Well, I don't understand. Oh, you'll have a fine time tonight. 
I told them to read him the annual reports for the last 12 years. <laughs> Dull as dishwater, but they'll keep him there till 2 a.m. <laughs> that, that contract you gave him, it's real, isn't it? Are you implying that I'm a heel? If your husband has the slightest doubt about that Oh, he contract... hasn't. And he's not my husband. Uh-huh. He... He's not what? Uh, I'm not married to him. You, 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 oh, what have I done? <laughs> yes, what have I done? You see, I met him and he's very poor and... Well, I liked him and I felt sorry for him. I mean, you said you wanted to make my husband rich and I thought if I... Are you mad at me? Well, this whole thing, just another plot against me. Oh, it's all my fault. He didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, I'll bet. I ought to go to a noggin doctor and have my head overhauled. Why, if he knew what I've done, it, it would break his heart. Break his heart? I'd like to break every bone in his body. That bearded phony. I bet even his whiskers are false. They are not. He shaved them off yesterday. Uh-huh. Just as I thought. What's that? Who are you? I'm not going to stand for this any longer. You come along, Miss Gingle Busher. Can you let go of You're me? You're coming with me right now or something terrible is going to happen. You, what's going to happen? I'm talking to her. Uh, just a minute, you. I've seen that ugly face of yours before. You're the waiter. Uh, uh, room service. Of course, it's a plot. For your information, Miss Gingle Busher, your husband has found out all about you. No, no. Yes, yes. He's on his way here now. Well, I can't be. He's at my board of directors. He... Well, maybe he is here. Yeah, so why don't you have him come in? Well, I... Huh? You want him to come in here? Yeah, bring him in. Well, there is somebody at the door. I can hear him. Well, come in, come in, come in. What do you want? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Nelson? Who are you? Who am I? Oh, you probably don't recognize me without my beard. Prescott? Good old George W.? Yes, yes, you're... <laughs> Your legal representative, you hired me yesterday, if you remember. Yeah, this is very interesting. Well, I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Nelson, but I felt it my duty to talk to you immediately about... Joe, well, what are you doing here? Hello. Uh, young woman, I wanted... You... Now, what happened to her? Where'd she go? Where did who go? This is all an outrageous conspiracy, but I'm going to get to the bottom of it. You come right back in here, young woman. Look, why don't us fellas just go out somewhere and have a drink, huh? We could... You... Uh, hello? Louise. Now, 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 Counselor, let's not jump to any conclusions. I, I told you I'd explain everything. You mean he was your date? J. Conrad Nelson? Yes. But I had no idea you knew each other. Knew each other? I thought you two were married. That's how you got your job. Would you mind repeating that? No, no, don't listen to him, George. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, this is very funny, isn't it? What was it I told you? Just stick to your ideals, be honest, never tell a lie. Look, Mr. Prescott, why don't you talk this over with oh, me? Oh, skip Help it, Joe. Yes, sir. If you'll excuse me, Mr. George, Nelson... let me go with you. Let him go. Haven't you done enough to him? George, please. We have nothing to say to each other, Miss... Dinglebusher. Yes, I know. But you're all upset now. Oh, I didn't mean to hurt you. I only wanted to help you. And thank you very much. Good night, all. I'm the landlady here, all right. Now, uh, what do you want? I told you, I want to see Mr. Prescott. I know he's in there because I saw him through the window, but he won't answer the doorbell and he won't pick up his telephone. I'm worried. Oh, yes, sir. I know. I know. Oh, been like this for two weeks and more. You're his father, huh? Yes, I am not. <laughs> I'm his, uh, well, his uncle. Now, if you have a key, open up that door. Well, I, I just hope it's, it's all right with him. Who is it? Uh, just me, Mr. Prescott. Look, I thought uh, I told you I don't want to see any... Mr. Nelson. Oh, no. You didn't start that again. What again? The chin whiskers, the shrubbery. Mr. Nelson, will you kindly get out of here? I will not tolerate a beard on my legal staff. I am not on your legal staff. Oh, you most certainly are, and I have no intention of breaking our contract. Well, then I'll break it. Oh, but you can't. Ironclad, foolproof. Would throwing you out the window break our contract? Yeah, well, it would surely break my neck. <laughs> and that, in turn, would result in certain unpleasant complications for you. You're a lawyer, you should know. I don't care. Well, others do. Um, may I sit down? You know, Mr. Nelson, when I first met you, I had the healthy impulse of throwing you out. Why didn't I do it then? Ah, because you're not a man to follow a first impulse. <laughs> that's what I like about you, George, and that's why I'm here. Well, if you enjoy hearing yourself talk, Mr. Nelson, you may as well be by yourself. As I was about to say, the fact that you walked out of my board of directors meeting... I walked out because I refused to approve the last annual report. Yeah, exactly. The others couldn't approve it without legal advice, and what happened? 
I find it saved me the pretty little figure of $285,000. It's quite a nice record, George. Beard or no beard. <laughs> what are you talking about, you old fraud? Yeah, you haven't read the newspapers, you'd know. I fired five out of six of my directors. I kept the sixth one only because he's... Well, he's my brother-in-law. Well, that's very interesting, isn't it? And therefore, I'd like to keep our contract and forget about uh, certain incidents that may have been connected with it. What do you say? Are you telling me the truth? Of course I'm telling you the truth. Now get in there and shave. Besides, you have a date, my friend. I'm not your friend, I'm your lawyer. What date? Uh, with that waiter fellow, Joe Winarski. He's been worried about you. He and, and some other persons. I will accept your offer, Mr. Nelson, but I will not keep any dates that you've made for me. Yeah, well, I think you should. You see, Winarski and I became quite well acquainted. Uh, there was some champagne left, which helped quite a bit. <laughs> And anyway, as a result, I decided to back him. He's opening his own restaurant tonight, and I figured that you and I could go there together. So Joe finally has his own restaurant. Well, I'm very happy for him. Yeah, so am I. He's selling my lamb chops exclusively. <laughs> now go get yourself shaved, and I'll wait for you. It's just beautiful, Joe. As beautiful as the Savoy Ritz. High class, huh? Come on, I'll take you to the table. <laughs> Remember the time I told, sold you the turkey sandwich for the price of a chopped chicken liver? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, this restaurant is a kind of a joint where you can sell chicken liver for the price of a turkey. <laughs> uh, you still want me to sing? Still want you to sing? Ain't the orchestra been rehearsing all afternoon? Young lady, I'm depending on it. I'm having a spotlight hit you right over the head. <laughs> I... I don't feel very much like singing, Joe. Well, you better be good, because I got a big surprise for you. Joe? Uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm not telling what it is, but you're gonna like it. You mean George is going to be here? You like that, huh? Well, that's it, all right. My partner, Jay Conrad, is bringing him. But isn't that Mr. Nelson now? Huh? He's alone. Alo Look, you wait here at the table. I'll be right back. partner you are. I sent you to get George W. Prescott, and where is he? Well, he's not coming. You went in to shave, and he wouldn't come out. Well, that's impossible. He can't do that to me. There she is, sitting over there in a brand new evening gown, paid for by this rest, paid for out of my own expense account, ready to give out with the notes, and he's got the nerve to... Good evening, uh, Mr. Nelson. Well, little lady, how nice you look. So George just got here, huh, partner? <laughs> he did. Well, the, uh, But if he's here, where is he? Oh, he's somewhere around, isn't he, Jay Conrad? You, you just left him, huh? I, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, just well, left him. Call well, us. I don't see him anywhere. Well, this is a big joint, opening night, big crowds. It's hard to find anybody. Oh, does he know I'm here? Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, he does. And he wants to see me? Well, what do you think he came here for? Look, why don't you go up there and sing your song, huh? It's the right moment, people are in the mood. I'd huh? rather wait, Joe. Why wait? As soon as the music starts, everybody's gonna settle down and look at you, and, and, and that'll make it much easier for him to find you. Am I right? Right. Yes. I hope I don't let you down, Joe. No. As for you, Jay Conrad Nelson. <laughs> yes, partner? Call him up, do something, find him. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Joe Winoski's French Cuisine is happy to present a singing chanteuse I know you're all going to enjoy... Uh, uh, hey, hey, where is she? I don't know. She just ran out there to the terrace. You know, that girl's got the makings of a mighty fine sprinter. Yeah, well, well, come on, let's get her back here. You see what a weak character I have, Louise. I couldn't stay away. George, you wanted to see me. You, you do care. Well, I... I wanted to see Joe, too, of course. Hey, counselor! Joe, well, congratulations. You wanted to see me? Well, you see me. Now bring her in here, huh? Oh, you were just going to sing, weren't you? I interrupted. Oh, I can sing any time. Well, not before an audience. Go in, Louise. I, I want them to hear you. I want them to see you. Is that all you have to say to me? Oh, no, no. There's more. A very uh, important matter I want to discuss with you later. You'll wait here. You won't go away. Uh, he'll be there if I've got to nail his shoes to the floor. Now get in here. I'll see you in my dreams Hold you in my dreams Someone took you out of my arms Still I feel the thrill of your charms 
Oh, Louise. Oh, that's the nicest song I ever heard. You... you said there was a very important matter you wanted to... Oh, oh yes, yes. Uh, do, do you realize your name is still Gingle Busher? Well? A and that you came to me to get it changed, that I neglected to do anything about it. Oh. Well, now, don't you think I've forgotten about it? How would, um... How would Prescott do? Louise... Gingle Busher Prescott. It has sort of a ring to it, hasn't it? Yes, it has. A sort of a wedding ring. Oh, yes, George. It's a beautiful name. Thank you, my darling. The curtain falls on the final act of I'll Be Yours, tonight's presentation by the Broadway Playhouse. Our thanks to Anne Blythe, Robert Cummings, and William Bendix for their outstanding performances this evening. Others in the cast included Tom McKee, Willard Waterman, and Eddie Marr. Join us again next week at this same time when stars of Broadway and Hollywood will again appear in the Broadway Playhouse. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.